10 years already. And uh, I wanted to start talking about events that led to, to my stroke because I started with problems way before. And that year was just a bad year for me. And excuse me because I get out of breath. But anyway, on February the 3rd of 2011, I had a car accident out on the highway. It was so. Uh, there was a light snow falling that day. I don't know if you all remember, but uh, I had retired in 2009 and I was working another job. And then my son was, my younger son was in college in Edinburgh and his birthday is on February the 6th. So he had a girlfriend living in Laredo and she didn't drive. And she wanted to go spend some days with him there in Edinburgh. So she asked me if I would drive her to Falcurias, halfway there, and uh, and then she would go with my son and I would go home. So that day, a cousin of mine was supposed to come with me, and it's a good thing she did, and she changed her mind at the last minute. And I've never been involved in an automobile accident or had any kind of driving problems, so I felt very safe and secure, you know, driving under those conditions. And uh, I was just very naive. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know better. So anyway, I took the girlfriend and I left her in Falcurias, and we parted ways. And on my way home, um, I was just outside of Hebronville when my I lost control of my car because I was driving like 55 miles an hour, and I hit a spot just past the, the airport in Hebronville and my car went out of control. The pavement, uh, it changed, and my car began to swerve, and I couldn't control it. I spun around, hit the edge of the, of the grass, and I rolled over one time and landed on mm -hmm. some ranch out there. And uh, anyway, I was conscious the whole time that this was happening. I said, I just can't believe it, you know, that I'm, I'm okay, you know, nothing happened to me. So anyway, everything was thrown out of my, my car. Uh, my whole car was totaled. It was all sunken in and all the windows were broken and the only door that was intact was the driver's door. So I opened the door and it was freezing outside. There was snow and everything. And uh, my cell phone fell and it lit up. So I picked up my cell phone, I called 911, and within 10 minutes, DPS was there, the sheriff's office, and the paramedics. And uh, they put me up there in a hotel in Hebronville for the night because the roads were so bad, they weren't even, they weren't even uh, recommending transport to a hospital. And the paramedics checked me out. I had a little small bump on the top of my head. Nothing was. The skin wasn't broken. It was just a little bump. They put an ice pack and it went down. I didn't even know that I had the bump there until they told me. So anyway, my problems began after that. Actually, two weeks later, two weeks after my accident, on the 18th of February, um, when I started having pain in the top of my head, and it would radiate to my left side around my ear and I couldn't hear very well on my left ear and I had a, this tenderness there and I couldn't sleep, I couldn't lay on my left side because it hurt, it bothered me. And, uh, and besides that, I had pain in the back of my neck and this was like two weeks after my accident. So I go to the, to the emergency room and uh, they told me, they, t they did an x-ray of my head and they told me there was nothing wrong, that they didn't find anything. So they told me that it was whiplash, whiplash two weeks after. So they gave me all these medications, they gave me a neck brace and they sent me home. I started taking the medication and it made me so sick. I couldn't tolerate it, so I just stopped taking it. And then on, on February the 25th, a few days later, uh, I was still having the pain and, uh, and still complaining. 
and uh, then on March the 1st, I had an appointment with my doctor. I had made an appointment with my doctor after the accident to tell him, you know, well, it was almost a month after the accident, actually, so I hadn't had any problems. I haven't, didn't have any reason to go other than, than what they, I thought was whiplash. So anyway, the doctor checked me out and said that, uh, that it was uh, not whiplash because whiplash happens one to two days after you have, you're involved in an accident. So he told me that I had a lot of tension in the back of my neck, that it was very tight and it was probably just tension and, and worry and depression. And uh, so he took me off of the medicines that they had given me at the hospital and he gave me prednisone and he gave me some other medicines. And uh, then that was on March the 26th. Um, I was still experiencing the, the head pains and all that. And so I continued to take the Tylenol and the prednisone, and it, it didn't help. It didn't, wasn't helping me any. So then on March 27th, the following day was a Sunday, so I was getting ready to go to church. And I woke up that day and I was feeling funny. I, I knew something was not right. I felt like like a weakness, not not like not like I was going to faint, but like I was going to fall. Like I just didn't have any strength. And, um, and I, just, I just felt funny. And so I said, well, I'm gonna go ahead and take my shower and get ready to go to church. And I'm gonna sit in the very back. And if I feel bad, I'll just get out and leave and go home. And uh, so that's what happened. I went to church and I was sitting in the very back and we were standing, praying. And then I felt like I was gonna fall down. So I said, no, I don't want something to happen to me here. So I left. And I drove my car home, which was about four blocks from the church. And I went in, I sat in my bed. And I called my husband over and I told him, I said, I don't know what, I tried to tell him, I don't know what's wrong with me, something's wrong with me, I think I'm having a stroke. 